So in this video we're going to learn how to simulate transformers or mutually coupled inductors. Uh, so we're actually going to just be building the circuit in figure P9.76. Um, so let's go ahead and start building that. So we have here, if I just go into my source, I have a sinusoid, so we'll do V sine. Now this is actually a sine wave. There we go. Um, and we'll talk about how to set those parameters in just a second. We'll add in a ground. Actually I'm going to put two grounds in. Um, you don't need two grounds, but I just like having them because I'm going to have these circuits drawn separately here, um, but they'll have the same ground and we need a couple resistors so a resistor here rotate it and then a resistor over here and then finally we need an inductors so you notice here when I select the inductor there is a little dot there that dot is important that is for your dot convection and in this case there's a dot at the bottom and then I have a dot at the top on the other one. So now I'm just going to wire this all up here and then we'll set the parameters. So wiring it all up and all right so now we just have to set the parameters here. Well, this is 100 millihenries. This is 400 millihenries. Oops, 400 millihenries. This is 240 ohms. And this is 80 ohms. All right, so we now need to see set some of these here. First off, you can enter them here but in some ways it's easier to double click on this and you get into this property table here now you can scroll to the right and enter all the properties in that way but you can also hit this little thing called pivot which will pivot the uh, um, table here and so let's see here um, what was the frequency here so it, Omega was 800 so let's see here we have to do 800 divided by 2 pi of course to get our frequency and I get roughly 127 Hertz so with that click on the frequency even though it seems like it's grayed out that just means you haven't entered anything in there and it doesn't have to technically be entered although I don't th I think it will spit out an error so 127 Hertz um, then we're going to scroll down here and we're going to also notice that there's a phase and it's at zero degrees now we want to actually set this phase at 90 if we want to get a cosine wave because by default this is a sine wave so I want to make sure to get a cosine wave um, and then if I scroll down um, there's a V amplitude which was 168 um, and then there's an offset voltage if you wanted to have that but we don't need to have that so I'm just going to close this tab and you'll see that it has updated here um, I'll move this out a little bit here so you can see that it's updated those numbers frequency 127 notice that the phase shift is not actually displayed here but it's important if you want to have it be a cosine wave alright now the one thing that's still remaining here is we have this mutual inductance here um, now you're not actually going to draw an inductor here. So this is where you're going to go and you're going to um, not get that K linear. K for your coefficient of coupling. And you even used K before. So you're just going to double click on that and we're going to put one in here. And if this one, if I recall correctly, when we had computed the coefficient of coupling it was 0.5. Now we have to go in here and set what inductors are coupled together. Now this is where 
it's going to look like we're just repeating the same thing here. But when we go in here, oops, double click on this K linear. If I can get back and select the, there we go. Notice that there's this L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and L6. What that means is we can couple up to six inductors together. That does not refer to the name of the inductor. So, but what you can do is say, okay, well, what's the first inductor I want to couple to? What's the name of it? Well, L1. That's the first inductor. And then, what's the name of the second inductor? L2. So in this case, L1 is equal to L1 because the first inductor you want coupled together is name is L1. Now I want to emphasize here, you could actually have written this as L2, L1, because again, you're putting these actual inductor names right here into the coupling labels there. So that has now set us up for coupling. So that's gotten us our coefficient of coupling and we're ready to go ahead and generate a simulation profile. Now when we generate our simulation profile, I mean it's going to be a transient as well. Create that. It'll take a second for that to pop up. While we're waiting for that, you should calculate the period of this because the default time scale isn't going to be correct. And if you calculate the period, you get roughly 7.9 milliseconds for this because of the frequency of 127 hertz. So it's only running for 1,000 nanoseconds. That's clearly not long enough. So what I want to do is I want to run that for longer than the uh, time frame here. So 8 milliseconds is roughly a period, a little bit more. Um, so why don't we maybe do, for instance, like, I don't know, let's do just two periods worth, so 16 milliseconds. The start saving data after so many seconds, we might have to come back and change that because remember, sometimes circuits take a while to reach a steady state because there's a transient response that we're ignoring. And we'll see if that's something we need to be concerned about. And you can also set the maximum stat step size, which I like to do here. I'm just going to do it as 0.1. Uh, let's do 0.01 milliseconds just for fun. And click on OK. Now I'm going to put a couple voltage probes here. So I'm going to measure the input voltage to here, or not the input voltage, I should say. It's the actual um, voltage of the source. And then I'm also going to measure an output voltage, R2, here. Then we're going to go ahead and run the simulation. Oh, failed netlisting errors. Oh, V off has no property. You actually have to set an offset voltage zero. Now let's try and run that again. So even though we are not using any offset, we have to set it. And so we'll set it at zero volts. All right, so here we can see these are the output waveforms. Now notice we do have a cosine wave here. Starts at 168 at zero seconds, goes down, then up, down and up and so on and so on. Okay, so now it looks like there there might be a little bit of a transient going on here because it's starting at uh, zero here and you can see, well wait, it's not zero right here um, as far as like when they cross at zero here, it's not up at the 160 again. So there's definitely a little bit of a transient response going on right here. So let's go back and re-simulate this and account for that transient. So we're going to run this now, let's say for 24 milliseconds, but we're going to start saving after 8 milliseconds, after one period. The uh, transient response wasn't that large, so we'll go ahead and rerun the simulation. And now we can see we've gotten out of that transient, the transient is gone, and now we're in a steady state. Now the next thing we want to do is be able to determine, for instance, the angle of these here, um, the phase shift angles. And while there's not actually a direct way to compute these phase shift angles, but there is kind of a workaround that you can do. So let me show you the workaround. So the way we're going to get this workaround here is we're going to go here to evaluate measurement and then what we can do is there's not a direct way to compute the phase of a function here, but I can measure 
the time difference. And what I can do here, for instance, is I'm going to measure, put, start an open parenthesis, and if I scroll down, there is x at max y. And so I can do x at the maximum y value here. And actually, one thing I want to do here to make this a little bit simpler, I'm going to go back to my simulation and re-simulate it a second. I'm going to label a couple nets here. We've talked about this in other videos. I'm going to label this as the output. And then I'll put this here, and then just call this the input. That'll just make it a little bit easier for doing the uh, evaluate measurement. So we'll go back here, run the simulation again. Doesn't look any different. And so we'll get here to evaluate measurement. And I'm only going to deal with uh, voltages here. And so again, we're going to start with a parenthesis. And then we're going to scroll down to x at max y. So that's going to give me the x value at the maximum y value. And we're going to do it at the output voltage. And then we're going to minus x max at y of the input voltage. So I need to do the input voltage. And then a parenthesis. And I'm going to divide that by the period of the input. So period of the input voltage. And then multiply this by 360 degrees. So if I click on OK, we get negative 180 as far as my phase shift. And I believe if uh, you go back to this problem that we did in class, um, we did have a phase shift of negative 180 degrees. And well, it's negative 180.147. All right, now what we can do, and this is what you're going to be required to do here, is we can change this coefficient of coupling and then see what the effect of changing the coefficient of coupling has on a couple things. One, we should look at what happens to the maximum value here. I can show you how to evaluate the maximum values. And then also, of course, what happens to the phase shift. Um, this phase shift is no longer um, 180 degrees. But if you t do this here, toggle measurement results window, you don't have to retype that formula in. It's already there, so I'm just going to evaluate it. Now it's at negative 190 um, as far as the phase shift. But then I can also, for instance, um, compute the maximum of the output voltage. And so the maximum of the output voltage is 107 volts. So it's stepped from 168 down to 107 volts. And you know you could play around with this. And let's even do like a coefficient of coupling of 0.25. Rerun the simulation. And we can go ahead and trigger the evaluate measurements. Negative 174 degrees and then 35.6 volts. Now this should make sense because if their inductors aren't coupled together that means nothing from the inductor 1 is getting to the inductor 2 and vice versa. So the lower the coefficient of coupling the less interaction those inductors have. Um, which is why in ideal transformers and in transformers in general, um, you can almost assume they're one because they're literally built together. So they're very highly coupled. Um, but sometimes you don't want to do one. You could do 0.99. Anyway, on the homework simulation assignment, you'll have a couple different ones to look at.